Hello, today we're looking at this topic called active transport, but before we do that, I think it'll be quite important just to recap on diffusion, of our previous video. Now you'll remember that diffusion is a spreading out of particles, and by particles, we have particles that could be in a solution, i.e. dissolved in water, or they could be particles of a gas. And in diffusion, they move from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. And when we talked about that movement, we, all, we uh, said it was a net movement of those particles. So during diffusion, particles can move in both directions, but they have an overall movement towards the lower concentration. And that was our idea of diffusion. And one example that we gave for diffusion was uh, that of oxygen diffusing into cells from blood vessels called capillaries. And we had red blood cells that contained high concentrations of oxygen because they had just come from the lungs. So we've got oxygen in higher concentration than in the cells, and therefore the oxygen moved into the cells by diffusion. We also gave a second example of carbon dioxide. Now carbon dioxide is produced by cells because those cells carry out a process called aerobic respiration. And that carbon dioxide would be therefore in higher concentrations in the cell, so they would diffuse out into the blood. Okay, so that's a recap. What we're gonna look at today is something slightly different, it's still transport, but it's called active transport. So what do we mean by active transport? Well, the first thing to probably look at is the definition or the meaning. So here we've got it written down. It's the movement of substances from a more dilute solution to a more concentrated solution. That means in our dilute solution, we will have fewer particles or fewer of the particles that uh, we want to move into a cell fewer particles and in our concentrated solution there would be more particles in a given volume or a higher concentration and therefore we need energy from this process of respiration for that to happen because we are moving particles against a concentration gradient we're going from low concentration to high concentration imagine we have a cell and that cell contains an important substance, for example, glucose, but it's in lower concentration outside than inside, we would therefore need to have active transport to move those remaining particles in. Okay, now, where are common examples? Well, the first one here is the small intestine. And this is a cross-section of the small intestine. So if we were to try and draw that as three-dimensional, we could just quickly uh, draw in like this. Hopefully you understand that's supposed to be the three-dimensional version of the small intestine, but if we're looking at a cross-section there, that's what it might look like. We might have glucose in there that has been digested from the food, and that glucose could quite happily diffuse in, but eventually it'll get to a point where it's in roughly equal concentration inside and outside. So we would need to switch to active transport to remove, to remove the remainder of that glucose in we would get to a point where we have a higher concentration of glucose on, on the inside of those cells. And we don't want to lose any of that glucose because it's a very, very valuable substance for the body. So we would use active transport as described by this uh, definition here. We've got a more dilute solution on the outside now and a higher concentration or a more concentrated solution on the inside. Where's another example? Another example is in plants. And something that a plant needs from the soil, apart from water, is minerals or mineral ions. These are really important for healthy growth. For example, magnesium, which is needed to make chlorophyll. But there are other examples as well. And they are often present in very low concentrations outside of the cells. In other words, very dilute solutions in the soil. And because they're so important, we, we still need a method to transport into the cells. So here's a magnified version of our root from above. So that's the root. And on the outside, you can see these specific kind of cells. And those are called root hair cells. And they have the job, you may remember, of increasing surface area for increased absorption of substances. But on the inside there, we have a higher concentration of our mineral ions and in the soil they're going to be present in low concentrations so we would need to use active transport to move those into the root hair cells and therefore into the plant 
So that's a second example of where active transport might be used from a very dilute solution in the soil to a more concentrated solution in the cells where the mineral ions are present in larger amounts for a given volume. Okay, so two very important examples of active transport. Please remember we're going against the concentration gradient and we require energy from respiration for this to happen because we are going against the concentration gradient.